everybody. Uh, so in this video, we are going to get started by exporting out our textures. Hopefully by this point, you guys have created your textures. Um, as you see, I have finished my textures here and they are ready to uh, be applied within the game engine or in our case, we're gonna be putting them in Blender. Um, so the first step for this is you wanna make sure in your texture set list that you have it named whatever you want to name it. So now if it says like maybe default material one is a name, you can just double click it and then you can name whatever you want. So I'm just gonna leave mine at piano and you say enter once you're done. And now the reason we do that is because what's gonna happen is when we export it out um, later on, it's going to, it's going to actually have those, the name will be associated with it. So it helps kind of keep things organized. Um, okay, so this is actually pretty simple. I'm gonna go to file. I'm gonna go to uh, export textures. And then if I go to my global settings, the first thing I wanna do is the outport directory. I wanna specify where I want this to go. So I do have, uh, I actually already have done this. If I want to, I made a folder for my uh, my piano where I have all the models, all the textures you can go into. So um, you'll select that. And then you wanna select the, uh, the type of material you're going to be, or the template you wanna use. So these templates, you can see them all if you go to outport templates up here you can see all these in here um you know i i usually use kind of a variation of a couple but what i'm going to use is just unity standard in this case um and actually you could even just use the default uh pbr meta metallic roughness because really all we need in this case is just this base color and that's it so i'm going to go ahead and um, just output template you can select it you can change what you want I'm going to do the PBR metallic roughness. Um, that'll work for this case. Uh, PNG is the file type I'm going to use, which if you want to use a JPEG or TIFF, whatever you want, you can change that. Um, and then as far as the texture size, you can you can change the texture size if you want a larger texture or a smaller texture size. Uh, just keep in mind the smaller the texture size, the more uh, or the the less pixels we have to work with. Therefore, you might get some pixelation. So, uh, for example, let's say if you drew a um, some wood grain in the uh, 1024 by 1024 setting. If you drop that down to something like pretty low, like 550 or sorry, um, 256 by 256, you might get a little bit of pixelation. Even some smaller detail might just blur out in general. So adjusting that can make, uh, can affect your overall quality. So just be careful um, when doing that, that you don't lose any of the quality you want. Okay, so those are the real, those are the things that we want. Um, so now if I actually put my piano here, I can see that here's all the mesh that's gonna be exported out. So I have my, or sorry, all my um, output maps. And it's only going to output uh, what's being used. So I can actually turn off all these other maps because I really don't need any of these other ones. I only need my base color in this case because I'm only using the, the color um, information. So I click that. And I would, would click export and it will just take a moment and it'll export out uh, all the maps that you have chosen. Um, so now if I were to go, let's see, let me go quickly find this. I'm not sure why it's being a little slow on my end. Okay, let's try this again. Here you go. Okay, so here I have actually have a lot of maps right now, uh, but here's my my map that I have, um, and actually this would be the map that I'm using. Um, so this is the map that was was exported out. Um, so I will actually just go ahead and uh, hold that map there. I'm just gonna move my second screen for now. And now we are done with our texturing software. So in my case, Substance. So I'm just going to minimize that for now. You could close it out. Um, just make sure you save it before you do. But the reason I'm minimizing it is just in case there's any kind of issues, I can real quickly just launch it or open it right back up. So um, now if you're seeing some performance issues on your computer, you might want to close it out. So now I open up Blender. I create a new uh, journal file. And you can delete any of the camera lights and default cube that you see in that new general file, as I have done. 
I want to now import in my piano asset. So I'm going to go to uh, import. I will go to FBX or whatever file type you did. So I'm assuming you did either OBJ or FBX. Now I want to locate my piano. And let's see. So here's my piano. Now I do have a few extra things in here that I'm going to real quickly delete because I don't, uh, I didn't go over really much of it. So I'm going to delete my candles here. Just by dragging across and deleting them. There you go. So now I just have a piano similar to what you should have. Um, okay, so now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to make this piano the proper size. So let's let's go ahead real quick. Let me go to the. Let's go, just go to the top here. I want to measure this out. Oops, here we go. I'm just going to measure this out from corner to corner. It's roughly this is about 20 meters long. So 20 meters, you're looking at 60, you know, probably 65 feet altogether here. So I've never seen a 65 foot piano. Um, that's pretty stinking massive. So we need to bring this down quite a bit. So what I'm going to do here, I first I'm going to make a reference cube. I'm just going to add a mesh. I'm going to add a cube. And I want this cube, let's say, to be two meters is pretty fair. That's about roughly six feet. I can see a, a grand piano like this being six feet wide. So I'm okay with that. So I'm going to actually grab that default cube real quick. And I want to move it uh, just up here, just above the piano. So that's going to tell me how large a piano should be. So now I'm going to grab this whole entire piano here, just drag across everything. Um, yeah, so I think I got it all. I'm going to go to my top view here. And to remember to change the views, you can just hold the V key and it will go to whatever view you have. I better turn on my uh, screen cast keys just so you guys can see in case you want to. There you go. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and select everything there. Go to my top of the V. I'm going to start to scale this down. And I want to roughly be about the size of this cube here. And actually, I kind of want to center it inside the cube altogether because the cube is right in the middle. Oops, the hair is smaller. There you go. And then we'll put the piano itself right about the middle of that cube. And then we'll go to my front view. I want to put this piano right on the ground. Um, right there is pretty good. Let me see. Yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with that. So now my piano is about six feet wide, which is a much more manageable um, size. So the reason I did that is because when it comes to lighting, it's going to be much easier to control the lights when you have things that are kind of realistic sizes. So for example, if I had a room that was, let's say, 10 feet by 10 feet with a single light bulb, I could light that room with one light bulb, right? Now, if that room was 100 feet by 100 feet, that same light bulb would have to be incredibly bright and unrealis unrealistically bright to light that whole room. So therefore, I just want to make sure that my piano is the correct scale um, you know, when it comes to lighting the scene. Okay, so uh, now that I have that done, I want to actually apply the... Um, I want to... I guess I'm going, to, I'm going to apply the texture here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select any piece in here. It doesn't matter which piece you select. Select any piece. And then once I have that piece selected, I'm going to go to my materials property on the right hand panel here. And right now this is a piano material. But right now the material is just white. We want to change that. We actually want to use the, um, the texture we created. So I'm going to click this yellow dot. And that's going to open up a menu. This menu, you want to look for something that says image texture because you're going to place that image texture that we generated in Substance Painter or Photoshop. And we want to use that image texture. So I selected image texture. Now to actually find my image texture. So I'm going to hit open. And then I'm going to go and I'm going to find this. Uh, oops, let's go ahead and hmm, have to find it real quick. Okay, so sometimes it's easier also if you have the uh, display mode icon on. So I'm going to go Piano D, and that's just Diffuse. That D means Diffuse. So I'm going to open this image. I just can double click it. And now you should see everything that has this piano texture on it, which should be everything, will now have a few extra to go to the preview. You can see now it has this, um, this image here. 
Now, one thing you're noticing is you're not going to see it. So the reason is because currently we are in the wrong view settings. So right now we're in viewport shading. Now, if you look at the top here on the right hand side, there's a few different, we're in the display solid mode. We want to be either in display material preview mode or display render preview. I prefer the material preview for the time being. So I'm just going to select the second one over. And now you should see that, um, now you see your textures appear. So one other issue I have is right now this has a, a shininess to it, which doesn't really make much sense. I mean, wood shouldn't be shiny unless it's like really well polished. Even cloth, cloth shouldn't be shiny unless it's like plasticky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my uh, material tab over here. And I want to lower the specular to zero. So that means it's now going to be a really uh, kind of really rough material. I can also move the roughness down as well. And so now it won't reflect any light, which is exactly what we wanted to do since this is a hand paint texture in my case. Um, now, if you had a material that you want to have a little bit of light, you can either plug in your own, um, you can plug in your own maps. In this case, I'm, I don't need any other, anything other than my diffuse map, my color map, and I'm good to go. Okay, so now we have that done. Um, we want to, you know, it looks a little bit strange just sitting here on its own, right? Because it's kind of floating in the air. So, it would be nice to have it sitting on something. Now you can either model a floor if you want. Notice if you want to have some wooden planks, you want to model that. And you can even recycle some of these wooden planks if you wanted to. I'm just going to go ahead and use, uh, I'm going to just model out a real quick cylinder or a, have a circular uh, space for it to sit on the floor. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to add, mesh, circle. I'm going to jump this circle up to maybe something like 48. Just get a little bit more geometry. And then I'm going to make this bigger than the piano, probably like this big for now. And if I go to my edge mode, I'm going to double click the edge here. And I'm going to uh, right click, just go to fill. And it'll actually fill this for me. So now we have this piano that's on a, a floor plane. And you can make this, I'm going to make a new material for this. I'm just going to call this uh, floor. Oops, got the cap box on. And then I can change this floor to any color I want. So maybe I'll make it kind of a, a deep, let's go, I don't know, maybe a nice deep purple will be fine. Or actually, let's go with the deep blue, teal. There you go. I might want to also move the specular down a bit. Um, with that specular drop now, I might want to brighten it a bit too. There you go. I think this looks pretty nice. I'm pretty happy with that. And of course, you can model something a lot more unique if you want. Um, for the sake of me just trying to be fast here and efficient, I'm not going to go into the process of modeling anything particular for this scene. Um, I just want to model something to give it a sense of of ground. Now, if you want to, you can also make this bigger. You can make it smaller. Totally up to you. Um, but yeah, I think I'm happy with how it is. Uh, so, now with that being said, I think we are now ready to uh, start to consider lighting and also cameras and actually capturing that, that rendering out that image. So we are going to cover that actually in the next video. Um, so by this point, you should have your, your piano or your model into the software. You should have the texture applied. Um, you should have it scaled roughly something that's appropriate so in my case, six feet wide or two meters wide is pretty appropriate. Um, and in the next video, we're going to go over lighting and rendering.